Hello there, Aries. Welcome to my channel, Joy to the World. I am your reader, Melissa Joy. It's very interesting. Your message is already spilling out everywhere. And it's like everything is already laid out and in a sense of order. You have a sense of what is coming in. You have a sense of what is on the horizon because you've sensed it all along in the undergird um, and in the underbelly because that's what they've been talking about, getting you out of the impulse and into your instinct and a few weeks ago. And uh, because your instinct is your true nature and your true self, and that is where the impulse arises from so that there won't be any life of regrets. For regrets, okay. So it's letting the horse get ahead of the cart so that the energy and the power is where it should be, leading you, guiding you, okay? So that you're able to be aware and, and of what's coming at you and how to navigate it so that it just if there are any difficulties they're only momentary just a snag and not a snare just the half a second instead of a big showdown hold up okay so they're trying to clear out this old energy of like soulmate people that call twin flames all that other kind of stuff karmic stuff family life black sheep all those things because it eats up so much of your time, space, and energy, and it brings online into your realm so many different things that it gets you so far off of your preference and your intimacy with yourself that it brings in a whole lot more. It's like a trick within a trick. So what you're showing me here in the overall theme this week, which is coming in, is this healing, being delivered from karma altogether. It's called liberation, okay? It's kind of like the Wonka Vader, right? And it wasn't that Charlie was perfect, no, because as you saw in his karma, in his family line, Grandpa's like, take it, Charlie, do this, Charlie. And Charlie's like, okay, Grandpa, I don't think we should, but okay. And then they end up there, and at the end, he's told to lose everything. And then Grandpa, whis whis he loses everything because of it, and then Grandpa whispers in his ear, that's okay, we'll get the money, we'll go to Slugworth. And Charlie goes, there's one thing when you were getting me to try and play, Grandpa, but to seek revenge on my own, to go against myself, my heart, he couldn't do it. And he returned the eternal, that's what everlasting is, to Willy Wonka, who represents the Godfather, right? Um, and right then, immediately his heart was touched. It's not like, oh, you were kind, Charlie. No, that's what he was looking for. Honest, true not caught in this trying to get ahead and escape, not caught in the past trying to get away and escape, literally being in the now of like, I don't know what my future holds. I had this wonderful experience, but I'm not about to change my whole life by being beneath myself, okay? So they want you coming from your instinct and getting into that and it's talking about intimacy breaking up the perpetual winter and letting life have its full seasons. Nothing holding you there against your will, locking you into the nightmare, into the obligation, into the dreamer, because it twists the words or it bends the story or it manipulates you. Very master of puppets energy. Some of you might check out a Pisces read, any of them. There's no specific one that I feel that they're pointing to, but often the master of puppets energy can come in through the house of Pisces. Some of you, it is Scorpio or eighth house, okay. But they're calling for intimacy, this two of cups. Because see, this is you looking in the mirror with yourself. That's why it's crossing over the midline. See inside ourself and our beautiful brain that we have, you know, our left hand is the right brain dominant and our left brain is right. And when you're ambidextrous, it's going between the two. Watch children. They do things using both hands. They run, they roll around, they're lollygagging, they're doing whatever, they're using full body expression. They're mapping their whole self. They're enjoying their whole experience. They're clearing their head space. Isn't that beautiful? And that's why they're quirky and dorky and silly and fun because those words don't carry any negative connotation with them. You ever watch children dance when they're age five and you see everybody just like feeling themselves and moving around because they're freely expressing the joy that's inside of them? Instead of looking over and going, wait, okay, I don't look as cool as they do. Oh, I didn't wear the right outfit for this dance. Oh, wait, let me do the hoochie thing that, that will attract grown people to want to have sex with me. There's none of that, okay? 
it really is bare bones that shocking that we trade what is natural for what is unnatural, okay? Just like undone, unsubscribed, it disconnects. It disconnects you from your nature. And they're wanting to reconnect you with your nature here by bringing in the intimacy of the Two of Cups, pure divine love. Look at the magic that occurs, that when you choose yourself instantaneously, you rise up from the mud. It is like the magic button. It is like when he laid that there and Willie laid his hand over him and he said, come with me. And he said, let me show you all your dreams come true. And Charlie is kind of like, I couldn't have dreamt that. I didn't know that. I didn't even know I had these dreams. Where are these dreams coming from? What is this all about? What is this magical experience? This magical ride? What is going on? It's a mystery, wasn't it? And grandpa got to go along. That's the beauty of it when we're not uh, uh, just caught up in those things. And we come into the truth and now we begin to rise up and that liberates everybody. When the tide rises, all the boats do. So, anyways, it gets you out of this old, you know, first of all, the hard work, dead endings. Karma is. Every record, when you put the needle on, it's going to end, right? And you get to do it again, and you get to do it again, and you get to do it again. That's where it's lessons, not blessings. Because you go back over the same patch, the same bump, the same hole, and you think, oh, what, what should I do about that? What should I do about this? Instead of just thinking, okay, okay. I'm going to get in the now. I'm going to get in the moment. I'm going to focus on my joy. I'm going to focus on tasting the food that's in my mouth, breathing the air that's around me, smelling it. You know, it's like the difference between hearing and listening, breathing and smelling, right? And thinking, what does the air smell like around me? You know, you try it right now. I smell a little bit of warm wood, tiny bits of sunshine. Sunshine does have a smell. Hang, long, hang laundry on the line and you'll smell it. When your children come in from running and playing, smell their hair, you'll smell it. Um, but anyways, that knocks out this old thing that's locked up the purity of your heart, the trusting of yourself, of where you're coming from because you don't have to justify yourself, you don't have to defend yourself. When we get into the truth of who we are, we don't receive all those external suggestions trying to break us down, break us up, break things up around us, whatever else. And we're like, no, I thought we are at a buffet. I'm not putting that on my plate. I'm not putting that in cue for my life. Because it'll say it like, I this, I that, or they this, they that. It'll sound a lot like you. Psst, blow that on out of here. If you're the producer, the director, the screenwriter, whatever else, begin to edit, reform, reject. Be like, no, thank you. Ooh, I heard that. That's the dino heron. Yeah. I call it dino heron. It's a night heron. They look very dinosaur, very Jurassic like. Lots of that going on around here, lots of it. But see this old death. See, it's another moth, you see? Uh -huh. And it's happy. It's so happy when you lose. It's so happy with your endings. That's where it loves because it gets you trapped in them. See, it's the brokenness of the cycle. Hoping that you don't notice that there is more light. There is hope here. That intimacy being reiterated. Let me get to it. See? Just two. You and you, right? Getting in there and coming into the one. Blowing away the old haze and the fog and the flies on the wall and the, the words that are hidden in the walls and the walls around us and ourself and our family line and maybe the ones that have been spoken over you. The things where people preyed on your happiness. See, there's more fireflies. There's more hope here. You don't have to go this route. Your meninges. It's, the, it's three layers that surround your brain, kind of like a radiator, okay? Keeping it cool because our nervous system is pure fire. It's electricity. It's lightning, friends. It is our body. And there's the soft mother and the hard mother. And then the arachnid, the spider layer in between, where they communicate between. And life doesn't have to be hard or soft. It's like Goldilocks, right? This one's just right. Why? Because it fits you. It suits you. But unlike Goldilocks, you don't have to be doing the shiz this up in somebody else's house. You got your own, my friend. And that's where they're wanting you to begin to lean into this. The trust, see? More divining with yourself. Not in order to find out about who's coming towards you and what they're going to do and say. I don't believe that's our right and privilege, friends. And when we dabble with that, we're messing with someone's personal private will. 
And it might not seem to bother you, but if you stop and think that someone was doing that to you, if you go into some of the most hurtful or disappointing times in your life and you imagined that someone had spoken that and created a spell and done it on you, would you like that? How would that feel? So that's what's talking about this purity and this cleanness of not like, oh, I'm so above everyone. No, it's literally going, why would I do to someone else what I wouldn't want done to me? And so that's where you take a moment in your mind to put yourself in someone else's shoes and not necessarily that person, but imagining, like I said, if that table was turned and that's how those things had happened to you, when you felt like you were kind of going against your own self and you didn't really want to, and you're like, why didn't I stand up for myself? Why didn't I make the better choice? I mean, because some people, it has ended in tragedy that took a long time to come out of like, like a horrible car accident, right? maybe even loss of certain things. But see, this is divining in with yourself and it's almost like she has a storybook open, a magic book open of what would I like to see in my life, mine, me, with nature, with opportunities, nameless and faceless, right? You might even not know what career you desire, or what form of income or living, but you feel the magic starting to cut on and that's what she's drawing near. That's like her heart light, you know, that he or she, whoever you are sitting there with it. But see, this is almost like a guiding hand sitting here holding a safe space for you kind of like when we would do uh we account when people are hiding right and imagine that these are treasures hiding and you're getting to sit there with yourself and then you're about to get to go on an adventure a scavenger hunt that's not for crumbs it's for treasures right and the thing i love about scavenger hunts is it's unlike school you, you solve this whole thing and you get to that one place and then there's a totally unrelated clue that takes you in a different direction. And it's about being able to get out of that old way of thinking of things building when really it's just about going on this journey, figuring it out, getting in connection with others and with yourself and like finding that space in your mind that could think so creatively and outside of the box. To get to the ending place where everyone celebrates that they had a great time and talked about how they figured each one out and got there, you know? Like the winning prize might be, you know, free ice cream at the night, but generally it's for everybody because it was just a beautiful shared experience, an intimate experience, right? Hmm. Beneath that, by freeing yourself from the wound, see the white wolf is here, it's the healed healer. It is a fucus. It's coming into this place of purity, purity of mind, purity of heart, that you see through the facade, this, this thing, the facades around you, the buildings, the places, the names, the pieces, the whatever else. And you start to see the energies that are operating behind it, the energies that are suggesting to you, the energies that you are connecting with, why you're drawn to certain things, why you're repelled by others without judging yourself. Just conversing with yourself about it. And that leads into this powerful, wise woman at the grove, this grace. See, long time back, okay? No, it was probably November of 2020. You may wanna go back into the vault. There was a series of readings done for all the signs called Massaging the Ruby. You might see Michael there or something else or a red card, whatever it is. But it's about our base root chakra, the power source, our connection to our source and our resource our sense of self, our life, and see the wisdom, the grace looking on, because just like our body, we're not just an arm or just a leg, it's all connected. It's all synergistic and we treat ourselves as the whole. That's when people can recover from brain injuries and other injuries, is getting back into the center and moving like a starfish does, okay? Each limb might move independently, but there is a connection. There is this, divine connection. It bypasses language. It's that nervous system, the light body, our nerves, it's lightning, right? These pulses of light that move at the speed of light that travel down there, right? I mean, the moment you move your hand and touch the pan, you already know it's hot, okay? So anyways, and that begins to create a turn, a turn of events for you, friend. Interesting. A turn of events and under here is another two of cups. Because no longer is it about competition, power, strength, pressing on.
manipulating, maneuvering, positioning yourself, all that, and that's literally experiencing. You could almost shut your eyes and end up in the perfect spot because you're being led by yourself, by your truth, by your heart, by this power and force that's so much greater than you are. That's this cosmic green. Because the greatest thing about alchemy and all that other stuff is red and white make green. Okay, red, the blood, sweat, and tears. White, the hopes, dreams, and fears. When we get together into the center of them, we get into that balance point, which is, which, what, who am I? And what do I do in this moment? What do I do in this situation? What do I say? What do I not say? And it gets past the way, like I said, you don't have to, these things, all that. It's just, okay, okay, all right, yeah, mm-hmm. And the more you do it and you practice this, this trust, this divining with oneself and being in that intimate relationship, it can bypass space and time and be instantaneous like that lightning body. That's what we're doing when we're getting back into the center of ourself, into that power point, into that instinct, right? Okay. You know, in the animal kingdom, they're not sitting there having a conversation with themselves. They're sensing things just like our senses, right? That's where that trust is being rebuilt and restored. And that's where you begin to move through this amazing turn of events and the healer of the ages. This is you, my friend. This is you. Moving forward this way and not being trapped to go that way or that way. Past or the future, past or the future, them or them, this or that. No, me, 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 myself, and I. It's the only one you can truly know fully and completely is yourself. The only one you know instantaneously and full access to at all times, at every second of every day, forever and ever, is right here. And so rather than trying to deal with the whole world and get it all arranged as such so that you could be comfortable, how about you navigate yourself and experience with yourself and go about and experience and express yourself with life? Enjoy these things. Dance upon the waters. Swim in the sea. Taste the food. Travel around. Feel the wind in your hair. Find friends that have a great life that aren't laughing at you. They're laughing with you, maybe they're even funny. They just, I remember my great, great uncle would say about the love of my life, my precious Aunt Myrtle. I can't even stick the greats on there because that's too separating. And he'd say, I love that gal. She's easy with her laugh. Because he was a funny man, like, kind of deadpan dry, funny. You just think you're having a conversation before you know he's laid a joke at your feet and not a jokey joke. Like something that your brain goes, dun -dun -dun. almost like a little musical chorus right there. Ba -dum -boom. And you're like, oh my gosh. And there you are just laughing, freely laughing. How beautiful. Maybe it'll be you, my friend, who's easy with your laugh. Can you imagine? Do you remember when it used to rip roar through you like that? Just completely natural. Okay. I can tell there's a lot of processing through your body to be done. So I'll leave it right there with that note lingering in the air. I'd ask you if you like this, subscribe to my channel, please. And while you're here, tap that like button and help us rise up to the top. And we can chat in the comments down below. I look forward to hearing from you. We'll talk soon, friend.